The bowling called in the South Australia for day three of the Santos Tour Down Under between Glenelg and Victor Harbour. The stage reduced by 20 kilometres because of the excessive heat. Even at nine o'clock in the morning, it was already up to 35 degrees. And just to add insult to injury, there was a 7.2 kilometre neutralised section before the riders actually got to the race start proper. With a new climb on the horizon for the riders, coming in at 38 kilometres into the race, Penny's Hill. Mike Turta, very concerned about the day laying ahead with the hot weather, to wave the riders off and immediately two familiar riders breaking away again for the third day in succession. The South African rider, Nikolai De Lilimini, and also from the UniSA number 185 there, Scott Bowden breaking clear from the gun. The reason, Lamini was chasing the points on Penny's Hill. And Scott Bowden was trying to figure out which way he could outfox the South African who'd won the first two King of the Mountain points over the first two days of this uh, uh, Santos Tour d'Arnanda. But when we came down to the final few hundred metres, the South African Nicholas Lamini showed us why he's earning himself a very good reputation as a climber. He was going clear to the top of the Subaru King of the Mountains, maximum point 16. There's been three climbs so far this week in the Santos Tour Down Under, and he's now won them all. Coming back together as they're headed down towards Maiponga, 61 kilometers into the race, they still held quite a big lead over the main field. They had no reason to contest the sprint because there was no reason to contest just a three-second time bonus. But there was certainly concern in the bunch as they chased a single second to third place. Yes, it was a big battle to go for the time bonuses, and it looked very much as if it was going to go to Nathan Haas in the green jersey. They were trying to lead it out for the Bora Hansgrohe rider, uh, Jay McCarthy, but as we waited here, Sam Bennett in fourth position, well, he decided he was going to change the result. He had no choice because Darrell Impey went looking for that single second, and McCarthy wasn't quick enough. But Sam Bennett was, and he kept the second in the team camp. Onto the open highway, now bound for Inman Valley, with 32 kilometres left to ride. They pulled back the South African rider, but going alone was Scott Bowden. He still held out a little hope, and the temperature now was hitting 40 degrees. Yes, a warm day in the saddle for all of these riders as they made their way to the extremity of the Fleuria Peninsula. And as you can see, they're reaching a high spot of 44 degrees Celsius on the motorbike. He went through Inman Valley in first place to pick up a five points and three second time bonus, but it was a massive battle behind for second and third place. Yes, chasing those seconds which could decide this tour when it ends in Adelaide on Sunday. And the boys with any hope were contesting for the moment just these few seconds time bonus. Jay McCarthy was at it again, but so too was Nathan Haas in the green jersey in the middle. McCarthy tried to challenge him, Nathan Haas. These two finished together equal on time one year ago. Well now, they were a second apart as Haas got it and the two of them congratulated each other. A nice sport, nice sportsmanly gesture. And so, with about 30 kilometres left to ride, they brought back a Scott Bowden. He'd had enough in the hot sunshine. All that lay ahead now was the ride into the finish at Victor Harbour and the big sprint. And Alex Edmondson here was leading it out. Caleb, McEwen, Caleb Ewan, looking over his shoulder, thought he had it. He was going far too casually as Elia Viviani shot from nowhere over the top of Ewan. And then also Phil Bauhaus beating him as well. It was a race he should never have lost. But the man in blue took his first ever stage victory in this event and the first for his brand new team from Belgium. A win for Elia Viviani. The sun proved too much for now because the riders were taking a dip. We caught up with Viviani. Uh, it's the fourth sprint we do and uh, yeah, it's not easy to come in January with a good condition. So I think I never win. Uh, like like here in the early season like that so uh, that's a good thing so I do a good winter the feeling with the team is good and uh, yeah I feel really really lucky to be to be here and to take this win congratulations thank you well done. thank you yeah you know I think like in hindsight it's probably a, a finish that you're better off coming from behind um, as I did last year but um, yeah, you know, like I said, I can't fault my team. They, they were absolutely perfect and they did exactly what I asked them to do. And yeah, it was just uh, my stuff up in the end. 
yeah, you know, it's been good and, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed working with my, my sprint crew and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to the future as well. Well, the victory for Viviani and tomorrow the race goes on from Norwood to Uradla over the climb of Norton Summit. Because of the imposing weather conditions, the organisers have brought the race forward by one hour. The race distance will be 128 kilometres. Caleb Ewan will defend the Oka jersey. He says he can't do it over Norton Summit. We'll find out. Well done, Caleb, and thank you, Jeff.